as the raging effects of uh, the fuel subsidy removal continues. The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria has said the federal government must break NNPC's monopoly on importation. We'll be looking at that on the program this morning. And also we'll be having off the press where we look at the headlines on the dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's another very, very wonderful midweek and we do hope that you're having a wonderful time. If you're monitoring what the traffic situation is like, uh, to some it might be very, very good because the traffic is free in most areas uh, in Lagos State. But it does not mean that you will have to overspeed because the roads are freer than the usual. Go to last map page, that is the uh, Traffic Management Agency of Lagos State. You will see a quotation, or a quote rather, that carefulness costs you nothing. Carelessness may cost you your life. So as you find the roads free enough for you to just, you know, have fun on them, just remember all the time that you need to be careful because for everything that you find good, there's also something bad attached to it unless you use it uh, well enough. So a free road might be very good, might be fun for you, but if you don't use it well and carefully, you might end up never using it again, if you know what I mean. But let that not be your portion this morning or any other time. And then uh, if you go to that page, you will find that uh, there was a truck that was stuck somewhere, probably when it was raining, uh, it was stuck in the gutter somewhere in Meron. And uh, I do hope that it has been cleared at this time uh, because um, it was posted one minute ago, but it's also possible that inside that one minute, the truck has been cleared because we know the ripple effects that one obstruction somewhere in Lagos can cause. It could, it could start from Ojudubega, for instance, and it, it reaches the island because of one thing that has uh, happened in Ojudubega. That's how Lagos is wired. So we do hope that that truck has been removed because it is, if it hasn't, then we may be in for a very tough ride in some areas in Lagos here. So uh, you will also find that... Um, Vehicular movement from uh, Mobustik inwards Kenu is appreciable up to Kenu, but a slow moving traffic proceeding towards or inwards Al Haji Lukman uh, and uh, swimming pool. Hollandia Way on road Ajibade, okay, to Jesus House is appreciable. Now, sometimes when I read these things from last month, I get to find out some areas in Lagos that I, I never knew existed. So we have Jesus House here in Lagos, and we have Hollandia Way. Okay. Um, Osolo Way movement from Jesus House to Keno is good uh, to connect NNPC Road by Mobostik. Movement from uh, Akwako inward and outward international airport down to Nako is good to go. Movement from 7 and 8 inwards as uh, uh, a Farigo intersection is looking good for now. Inward Aswani in, is good to go. Movement from Aswani Junction to Asafarigo uh, intersection is still looking good, but movement st moving steadily towards 7 and 8. And all these things I'm giving you are under 10 minutes. This is what they were posted under 10 minutes ago. So uh, that means at this time that we're giving you this report, the movement is still good. Wherever you are from, uh, coming from to your w place of work. If you live in Lagos, you have to learn to move early enough because if you move early enough, uh, a lot of times the traffic is free enough for you to move. But if you move a little bit later than seven o'clock, for instance, if you're supposed to be at your office at nine o'clock, there's a tendency you could be at your office at 11 o'clock or even beyond. So <laughs> learn to move. We are early risers in Lagos State and I do hope that you're one of them that rises early. When you get back home, sleep early as well so that you can rise up early. The weekend is there for you to enjoy yourself if you have to unwind. So weekdays, do your best to do the needful. 
If you're running your own business as well, well, it's the same thing. Uh, rising up early will help you get to your shop, but then you don't have to sign a time book. Uh, so if you have to take your time, well, we can understand with you. But for those people who have to sign a time book or clock in uh, to any office, you have to rise early enough. Sometimes if you're on afternoon duty, you still have to move early because if you're on afternoon duty and you have to report at 2 o'clock and you want to move at 12, the traffic might be so bad that you get to your workplace at 4 o'clock or thereabouts. And you know what happens when the work, um, when the offices have closed at 4 o'clock. Well, um, we are, it's a Wednesday, it's a midweek, uh, and a lot of people after work, they will go to church, they will go to mosque, they will go to places that they worship because it's the middle of the week and all that. But whatever you're doing, remember to put our nation Nigeria in prayer because a lot of things could happen in the few days because like they say, a hungry man is an angry man. And how much this fuel problem is biting people, uh, we can't really know until we have gone like two weeks, three weeks, and if a solution is not found, we just don't know what will happen. But in your prayers, pray that a solution will be found, and then the people will choose peace over any kind of uh, emotion that they might have because of this. So when you want to surf the net or you want to go through whatever is happening, you find some things um, on the Internet. Senate approves President Tinobu's request to appoint 20 special advisors. And if there's anything that um, we can give kudos to this present administration is the swiftness with which they, they are acting. Whether solutions are coming or not, but at least addressing issues or talking about issues is one thing that Nigerians uh, had been crying uh, about in the past eight years. You know, uh, labor will go on strike. It will take government so many days to talk to them. Um, whatever group wants to go on strike will go on strike and it will take so many days. And when the government uh, finally talks with them, it, it always ended in some way. But this time, uh, Joesu went on strike and promptly uh, they met with the president and they called off the strike. Even though the 21 days that they gave will soon expire. Before you know it, it's 21 days. We don't know what will happen at the end of 21 days. But at, at least the response to whatever their problem was, was commendable. So if the government has not done anything, the fact that they're talking with the people is good enough for a lot of us. So, but every government needs a team to work with. And now, the president has sent a list to the National Assembly for approval, or not a list rather, but a request for him to be able to uh, appoint uh, 20 special advisors that will help him run his government, pending when he will have the ministers and every other person that should constitute that cabinet of his. But for now, this, those special advisors are very key to this administration, and the approval has been given. Let's see in the coming days what the um, what the appointments will look like. We hear that the, no particular list was sent to the National Assembly with the names of people who are supposed to handle what portfolio, but at least we know that 20 people will be uh, selected from among Nigerians to do what they need to do, uh, help this administration to grow or to really kickstart the way it should kickstart. Well, this is our Nigeria. We do hope that competence will be uh, considered above any other thing. Right now, we shouldn't even be talking about anything. When people were crying about uh, religious uh, tendencies or religious uh, biases, they said it didn't matter. When people were crying about ethnicity, they said it didn't matter. So right now, nothing should matter except competence, except uh, the ability to do what you have been asked to do, what you have been chosen to do. And we do hope that there are going to be uh, patriotic Nigerians who will think about Nigeria above everything else. When it is said that interest is what overrides everything in politics, uh, our Nigerian politicians, a lot of them don't think about the interest of the country, they think about personal interest, and that's where, where a lot of them get it wrong. So a, a, a PDP person could think about the interest of Nigeria taking a different route from what the APC should take, and the SDP the same thing, Labour Party the same thing, and all other parties might have their own roots. But this interest that they have should always, always 
come together when it's, it's talking about national interest. It's just different routes that political parties should take to get to the national interest that is the main thing, that is the final thing. But when you think about personal interest, then it puts us in the jam that we find ourselves. No ideology, no, 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 no personal integrity, nothing. So long as the money is coming, so long as uh, you still remain relevant and all that, you don't care. You don't even care about legacy. You don't care about what the people will say when you die. Today we still celebrate the Awala Wars, the Azikiways, and all the people who fought for our independence and made sure Nigeria stabilized somewhat until we have this democracy that we have now, and we've had it from 1999. So the labor of our heroes past must not go in vain. Let's always remember that. Another thing we, we can see is that Unilac confirmed students killing condoles with family. Uh, we heard that unfortunate news that um, a student was shot in uh, Unilac, a Unilac student was killed, and uh, some people were still thinking whether it was true or false. Well, the school authority, authority has said that it happened and they condoled with the family. And we too, uh, our hearts go to the family of the, the said student that was killed. We do hope that um, they will have the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. Uh, okay, uh, the, the student was shot by robbers, that's what we're hearing. And uh, whether it's robbers, whether they're killers, whether they, it's a cult, whether it was a stray bullet, whatever it is, He's dead, and because he's dead, the family will be very broken. We we hope that they will be strong enough to take that. When you when you, we know how difficult it is. If you've ever had a word go to school, we know how difficult it is, even for the rich and mighty, uh, to train your child in school, and then your child is in school, and then the life is cut short. All the dreams are cut short. The dreams of the child himself and the dreams of the family that sent that child to school. We do know that some of them, them hustle by themselves, that's the word that we like in Nigeria, to send themselves to school, to train themselves in school. So all that effort will go to waste if a thing like this happens. God will protect us. We do hope that the family, like I said, can bear that loss and may his soul rest in peace. Now, EFCC arraigns two bankers for two million naira theft. EFCC arraigns two bankers for two million naira theft. I don't even know what to say about that one. So you take your money to the bank, the people from the bank are stealing the money, okay? Sometimes this theft comes from the fact that um, some people have accounts with the, with the banks and they die, and then they sit on the money and some people share it. We've heard stories like this as well. But that is not the main issue that I'd like to talk about in this kind of thing that I've mentioned. It's the fact that a lot of people have accounts that they don't let their families know. Whatever they use this money to do, that they don't want their wives or their husbands to know, or anybody in the family to know, uh, it beats me hollow. And then when you die, there's not, nobody that can come to claim that money because you didn't let anybody know. You might have a next of kin written there. You might have some, a few people written there as people who could come, but you never even informed these people. And then the banks on their own will sit on the money and not contact or make any attempt to contact the family or whoever uh, was given as the next of kin or someone who should be asked in case of any uh, unfortunate happenings. So if you have an asset, you need to have someone who can, who, who knows about it Someone you can confide in that I have this. In fact, why wouldn't you trust your wife or your husband or your children? Or if you don't have any of these ones, why wouldn't you have at least one friend that you can trust? Or why can't you have a charity organization that you will will all this money to when you die? Because we see that a lot from the West especially. Millionaires, multi-millionaires willing all their money to charity so that when they die, they, the money continues to work for humanity. Why can't you do that if you cannot show your family that this is what I have, where I have? So this is a very worrisome trend. Uh, people in Nigeria do not even want to write wills. But even if you don't want to write a will, it, 
it will still happen. Whatever happens will still happen. But right now, the story is about two bankers uh, that are arraigned for 20 million naira theft. Well, we do hope they are not politicians as well, because we've heard also where uh, people that were supposed to be uh, prosecuted are not prosecuted. They have been asked by uh, the relevant the authority to stay action and not prosecute them. Well, we're not mentioning names right now. But whoever commits a crime should be prosecuted. The laws are there for prosecution, and nobody should cut corners. We should start seeing punishment for the bad that is done in a society. We should also start seeing reward for doing good. We remember a story not too long ago of a friend who, who came to the studio and, and we were interviewing him. He recently won an award uh, when they were giving, not, not an award, uh, well, he was conferred with a national, uh, national honor. And that was because he found money, big money. He returned the money. We saw another woman in, at the airport who did the same thing, and she returned the money. There are still good people in Nigeria, but we should get to see when people do wrong, they get punished, no matter how high they are. When people do right, they get commended, not necessarily to give them money or anything else, or to give them honors, but let's, let's just recognize the fact that if you do good, people are seeing, and we are helping you to pray to God that your life will be better. I might not be able to give you a millionaire because you did something really good, but I might be able to say, God bless that person. That is something good enough. So have you ever given someone who is really hungry money to feed or food to feed? Have you ever done that? Do you know the kind of satisfaction that comes with that? So when someone does right and you commend the person, there's a tendency that person will do even better next time. So let's learn that in Nigeria as well. So these people have been arraigned that, okay, they stole 20 million naira. <laughs> okay, let's see how that goes. But that, those will be uh, the top trending that we've had. Uh, there are so many other stories that we have um, that we could not just... Uh, that we could bring to you, but right now we'll just take a short break and see what the weather is right now. And we hope that it will help you to plan your day when you see what the weather is. Stay with us.